Big photo there. <laughs> then, uh, thank you very much uh, for being here. I uh, would like to thank the people that precede me uh, in this stage, in this streaming. Uh, but also, uh, also I want to uh, thank the elders of this land, the land in which we are. Uh, we almost never remember them, and we are here for them. Uh, I, in general, I like tech talks. Uh, I think they have reclaimed somehow storytelling, the power of storytelling. Uh, I like the fact that they also share personal stories with you. Uh, we have uh, so many uh, personal stories uh, going through that. Uh, but I want to uh, share stories of other people uh, in this short uh, minutes I have with you. Uh, because I don't think my experience is remarkable in any way or form. I just one of you, one member of a community, uh, a university community, uh, as to say. I'm here uh, basically to ask you, uh, anyone and every one of you, uh, which are the routes and the routes uh, that uh, have uh, bring you uh, here. Uh, and as you think about this question, uh, I want to uh, uh, share a little story about uh, routes and routes with you. Uh, and it's a story about this map. Uh, this map is part of a larger series of maps produced by visual artist Livia Posada. Uh, it shows the story of forced displacement in Colombia, my country. Uh, for time immemorial, people have been forced out of their lands uh, by volcanoes or floods or famine, but mostly uh, because of conflict. And as you might know, conflict is a struggle to control territories, and people, uh, and resources. In this case, in particular, Livia Posada tells the story of uh, African and indigenous women uh, that are forced out of their lands. They live in what is called the Chocó Basin, a territory in the margins of my nation that happens to be out of governmental control, uh, but that is also full of wealth. It has pristine forest, then wood, gold, uh, silver, platinum, uh, also uh, rare minerals used now in all your cell phones, such as Coltrane, exotic species, uh, but also it's a space free of trade and uh, it's a porous border, uh, good for illicit traffic. I have to tell you also that Livia is a medical doctor. Uh, and as a physician, uh, as a doctor, as a surgeon, she works with trauma, uh, with another kind of trauma, physical trauma. Uh, in this case, the legs are the object of the treatment. We're able to see how these legs are also a geography. The body is a map. Uh, as a geography, the body becomes a uh, a space in which the doctor scans, investigates, and, and takes control of parts of that territory, right? Doctors focus on specific spaces of, of this thing is going crazy, uh, uh, parts of the body. That makes Olivia Posada also a geographer, right? And as a geographer, uh, the body becomes a surface that can be interpreted, interpreted, can be interrupted, can be measured, can be controlled, can be divided, uh, can be described, and can be conquered, right? And remember, Livia Posada is a woman working in the stories of women. Finally, uh, Livia is also uh, an artist, a portrait artist. But I'd rather uh, rephrase that. She's not really a portrait artist. She's a counter-portrait artist. Uh, as an artist, uh, she works with trauma. It doesn't work with beauty, as many artists do. Uh, trauma that goes beyond the wounds and the scars of these battle lands uh, and legs that used to walk under incredible conditions, uh, escaping the horrors of conflict. These social maps uh, remind me also of another map of trauma. Uh, in the United States, uh, 
well. We have uh, terrible moments, historical moments, and one of them is called the Trail of Tears. The Trail of Tears is a massive policy of forced relocation of indigenous peoples that back in the 1830s suffer from exposure, disease, starvation, while they were en route to new quote-unquote designated reserves. These forced removals, including, uh, including mostly uh, female elders and children, uh, members of the Cherokee, Muscogee, Seminole, Chickasaw, and Choctaw nations, the men of those tribes were eradicated in the Indian wars early in that century. They were forcibly de-territorialized. Leaving the land meant not only losing their livelihoods, it was also uh, abandoning their ancestral and sacred connections to the territory. Remember that ancestrality is one of the conditions of spiritual and physical health to many communities of the world. We, we see that in the news all the time. Let's go and think about the Palestine and Israel conflict. Many of these stories of Exodus resonate in me. Syrians, Central Americans, escaping by sea or by land. But why? That's the question. What lies at the center of this forced displacement? As a child in Colombia, I was very lucky. I lived surrounded by the wonders of nature, raptors in the sky, sacred hummingbirds of all kinds summing around, insects of incredible shapes and colors, small mammals and reptiles, flowers, water and the smell of soil. Me, my siblings, and our peasant friends used to jump in the cold waters of the Andean streams we played with mud, we ride horses, we walk great distances without any scare and fear, and we climbed the tallest trees. My father, also a son of peasants, studied and became a forestry engineer. He took us to many pristine forests across the land. I ask myself today, where are they now? Where are the raptors? Where are the mammals? Where are the insects? Where are the child peasants and those tallest trees? Why I cannot find them again? We are provoking the so-called seven extinction. The rate of loss of life, non-human life, is unmeasured, as we do not know exactly how much diversity there is. It was thanks to my father my grandfather and the peasants I lived with, that I learned how to walk. They told me, step by step, steady steps, with not rest to, great, to, to reach great distances. And by walking, by seeing, by smelling, by listening, by feeling, we learn, we learn. Some will call this process exploring or exploration. Exploring is then at the basis of the scientific method. It is also a force that has pushed us, humans, to go every corner of the world and beyond. Not in search of illumination or evangelization or discovery. It's just part of our shared curiosity for the unknown. And it's a process that is possible thanks to our ingenuity. appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Exploring has given us the possibility of creating the archive of the world. 
from Alexander the Great, Galileo Galilei, Christopher Columbus, von Humboldt, Jacques Cousteau, Richard Everett Schultz, to the moon and March landings and what is to come. It's a render of a river. It is made with gold leaf, vegetable powder, and sands. You can say that it, this image is uh, like a mandala, an image of impermanence, a labor of love with acute attention to detail. Who can tell me which river is this? Yeah, 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 it's that one. It's that one, the one that you are thinking about. Yes, it's that one. But it is also, yes, a render of the Amazon River, made out of satellite image, a heavenly image. In some of my walks, I have learned how indigenous peoples of the Amazon navigate the intricate waterways of the Mother River. They do it by recitation, an old technique. That's the transmission of knowledge that happens mostly at night. The stories they recitate are about three rivers, one that is in the sky, the clouds, the global climate system, one that is on the surface, formed when the tree of life fell and created the Amazon, and one that is under, that is the largest reserve of fresh water in the planet. Until very recently, this form of knowledge, recitation, was the only one able to describe even the tiniest of the tributaries to the little creeks that fed the river and its global connections. This recitation has been possible thanks to a plant. You can call it the tongue of the forest. The one that makes the forest speak, that's the coca plant, an endemic Amazonian wonder. This is the vegetable powder that was used for the rendering of that image. You know that the misuse and abuse of such a powder has created a global war. The water in this render is made out of gold. Gold that has created the thirst for money that has bring a storm to the river. remains after this storm is a treeless, deforested land, polluted sands and toxic waters. Do you know that after, uh, that to make this wedding ring that I have used for almost 20 years this coming May, and I have to show you the ring, this ring that I have here, 1999, in May, 50 tons of soil was removed out of the land. It was washed, it was processed, and then put back into the banks of a river. I'm ready to give this ring away. I had replaced it with a ring that is made of a strong seed from the Caribbean. What are then the roots and grounds that bring us here? History is written with capital H. 
It's a succession of events and facts that create this narration of time. Some people correlate evolution that biology teaches with progress. This uh, history is also written in Romance languages, most of them developing the north. But these languages are unable to understand visual, oral, and embodied stories, those that are transmitted by no linear ways of being. My works are traversed by those stories written in lowercase h that are located in the so-called global south, which, by the way, is also here with us. It inhabits the crevices and the borders and the inner cities of the north. These walks have taken me to higher education. What I believe we are supposed to do here as educators, uh, because of our unique training and fortune as global walkers, is to live up to the responsibility to share with you, all of you here, our students, the routes that have been started way before, in many places by many people, from a diversity of origins and disciplines. We are here also, and we have the responsibility to share the roots of the problems we face today with you, those that seem unsurmountable, the challenges and inequalities that this world system has created that has surrendered us all. It's by infusing curiosity through these kinds of forums, cross-cultural, multidisciplinary, and embodied knowledge that we are able to start new journeys, your journeys. Yes, we have been pushing explorations uh, that have taken the natural and cultural resources of the land. We even are pushing the expansion of the human race even to abandon all hope and move beyond Mother Earth. But what about our journeys here, while we are here? An elder of the NASA community uh, told me once, Taita uh, Jose, by sharing the story of his people, his sons and daughters, the generation that is my generation, and I will quote what he said by talking about their experience. The old eggs, the old chicks are spoiled. Uh, we have to wait for the new eggs to hatch. Those are you, my friends. This is your time. This is your journey. We are ready. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to the elders. Listening.